All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Arm Crossfire with SP and Gabi. Today we have a special guest, and wouldn't you know it, uh, I closed off the document that I was going to read off with all the sponsors and all that stuff on it. So you know what, Gabi, let's put that to the end of the show. Let's get right into it. we got BLM here. Brendan, how are you doing today? Feeling good, man. What's going on with you guys? The holidays. The holidays. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's going on. And uh, recovering from the holidays. Nice. Yeah, same here. 100%. I feel you. So, take it away, Gabi. I'm going to try to get this thing open here before we get too far into the show. All right, all right young man. I've, I've heard that you're uh, fucking gunning for uh, Orlando next year. Rock and roll, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Either that or somewhere, somewhere in Europe. Like I've, I've made my freaking place here in Canada, I think. And uh, so now I've been traveling to the States... I've been all over north, this side of the world, and I've been winning everything. So now I'm going to try on the other side of the world and see if test my luck. Not luck, my skill, I guess. But. Yeah. Um, light heavyweight, eh? What are you, uh, 220? What, what no, I, I'm like 213 right now, like by the end of the day. So if you were to go to Worlds next year, it would be 198? Is that conceivable? Well, yeah, whatever the, what is it? Is it 95 kg, I think, or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I'd probably, I want to pace myself. Like, I was 247 last year, like strong but i'm stronger now for sure at the way i am but <laughs> i have no i have no means of being up there anymore i've made my mark like i don't see any point i've pulled the biggest guy that, that our country can produce so i'm done i proved i can do it. so i have nothing else to prove with that i'm not gonna pull these monsters anymore it's stupid i want to save my elbows because i haven't feel like it ever since then but you uh, pulled you pulled the biggest motherfucker canada can produce who wasn't an arm wrestler right yeah um who's your biggest win Who's an actual arm wrestler? And don't get don't get me wrong. I I, I ref that match. Mm -hmm. You were you uh, arm wrestled exceptionally, and he was no he was one strong motherfucker. But who's your biggest win to date? Who's an arm wrestler? Biggest date win to date? Who's an arm wrestler? So that's for me. I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't know a lot of the dudes that I've been beating. But all I can say is any tournament I've entered, I've won pretty yeah, easily. Yeah. So. I mean, there's guys in the States who these guys are like, oh, you got no chance. Like, whenever I went to New England, RVJ is trying to tell me I have a chance at placing on the podium. I walked through his guys like they were little kids. And about the end of the day, he said, good job, bro. Like, you, you fucking, you showed that you have the big dick. He's like, big dick vibes, man. Good job. Like, I don't know who those guys were. Like, I mean, Frank Hurst, there was uh, that John Cervantes guy, Al Sasser, Chris Myers. To, to be honest, I think I had a harder time in any tournament like I think in the provincials was harder than down there. Like I find you put up a guy like Bill Cameron against those guys, I think he kills them. I honestly do. I don't know what it is, man. Like I don't know if it's just a different style of arm wrestling. Like they're strong guys, but if you put them up in our tournament, I think they'll have a harder time winning than me going down there, to be honest. Well Bill's a fucking stud, right? Bill um, yeah. you know, beating Alan Ford, Bill has a, Bill's an amazing one ninety eight puller, a great hook. Just doesn't go south, right? People don't know him because he doesn't go south. He doesn't get a nationals world so but he's um yeah he's an awesome puller and the other one i was thinking of man i keep forgetting his name um pulls out of sudbury uh you've had brian wars with him before. brian, brian Desarmo. yeah disarmo that guy his left his hook left i mean um he's a beast, that, he's a beast. that's a huge underrated arm wrestler right there huge I think, underrated. Yeah. yeah i was just practicing with him actually in sudbury a few weeks ago and his left is like crazy but his right is actually busted up curry's cameron busted his arm up pretty yeah. damn like really good okay. Kurt holding him in a flop press and Brian was fully committed into the hook and couldn't pin him and mess his elbow up but I'm sure he'll come back because he's he's been in the game for at least 15 years himself too so yeah he's a beast as well now, but, yeah. before, no, no. before we went on the, we went on live we were talking a little bit about your accolades now what have you got for us what's been the what's the last couple of years looked like for you all right so I'll just go with last year because the years before that, it's it's nothing. It's been nothing major. I haven't traveled anywhere, so to me, it's it wouldn't be anything to brag about. But so just last year, as it stands, I got I got four state titles in Pennsylvania, left and right, and the overall champion both arms. I won the Arm Fight Club series undefeated and unpinned all year. And there was I had like I don't know how many soup matches I had. I think I had five or six soup matches each arm. I got two state titles in New England, uh, WAL Super Match two zero debut. I won the WF Pan American Champions. 100 kg plus both arms at, at like a 225 body weight plus the overall absolute champion both arms. I had about 40 matches that day, maybe more. 
Uh, I was the WWA Super Match winner, OVLPJ, and I won the 220s and the 220 plus. And uh, yeah, so far last year was a pretty good year. Pretty well, any tournament I entered, I won. I could be leaving some out, but it wouldn't be anything crazily to brag about. But it's been it was a good year for me. It was an, it was an opening year, and uh, now people can't say I. I, I, you have to travel because I've traveled and I've still been winning. So now I'm going to go try the next step. So somewhere even tougher. Hopefully. And what is the next step? What is the next step for, for you? Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Europe, like, I mean, Zlati or something, or even the world's in Orlando, something that's going to really test, see where I am at. Because right now, I, I don't think anybody can say, like, I know Gabi has this tier system. I don't think you can, I don't think it's easy to rank me right now because I haven't been losing. Sure, I haven't went against these super elite guys, but how can you say that I'm not worth it when I haven't lost yet? You know what I mean? I have to at least have a chance at pulling these guys to say, okay, this is where you stand now. That's the way I look at it. Well, to your credit, you have gone hunting, but uh, the guys... Exactly. Started, it's, you know, not my fault. it's not my yeah. fault. I'm not, I'm not the type of guy that hides. I'll knock on your door, walk in your house and pull you but if you decide not to pull it's not my problem i'll just win anyway yeah you know um yeah your credit in my world went up when you when you uh, called out rbj and you went to new england like you said you didn't know he wasn't going to pull um you hoped he was going to pull and he at the last minute decided not to which of course was his, his um his yeah, prerogative. Exactly. exactly but that's not that's not on you right you were willing to yeah you went right to his backyard so there's there's credit there for sure. Mm -hmm. Even in Pennsylvania too, there was yeah. there was some tough guys there. Like Storm was there. Uh, Paul Lynn was there, right? Yeah, yeah, Lynn was there. They were they were. I mean, Paul was a busy guy that day. I, I nothing against Paul, like, but I mean, those guys could have pulled. I mean, Rob was there. I don't know if they knew I was going or not, but I mean, I was there and I won. So to me, it's I have to. I mean, hopefully I get a call from Wall and I sit, they give me a chance to pull somebody. I think I'm right up there with those guys, I, to be honest. Sure, I'm, I'm heavier than them, but not right anymore. I mean, I'm walking at the way they're walking at. I can't see any issue with getting a match and pulling one of these guys. Yeah. So I asked you this before, and uh, you said maybe not, but there's a slim chance that IFA might require you to go to nationals. So if that's the case, will you be in Winnipeg? Yeah, I mean, if the funds, I just bought a house, so if the funds are right. and it looks, Hey, we all got something in common here. We're all buying new houses. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, my, mine's a trailer, so I don't know if that counts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. It's still a, still a home. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if I go, it'll be the, I wouldn't, like, try and cut weight for it. I would just pull whatever I'm walking at, and I would probably, I mean, I will win. If I, if I can visualize it, I can do it. That's the way, that's a big part of my game. I, I understand when things are obviously impossible, but if I could see myself doing something, I can just make it happen. But it's not my finger. Like, that's my mentality. I have over a lot of guys. A lot of guys get worried. Like, oh, who is this guy? Who is this guy? I walk into a tournament. If I say, I'm going to win this tournament, I just, it's just like nobody can stop me. It's its really crazy. It's hard to explain, but I, it's really cool. <laughs> right I think I think I think sometimes maybe you might overvalue yourself, but that's not a bad thing. And one thing that comes to mind when I think of you is you just have fucking balls. You don't, you just chase and you don't care if people like, I've tried to dissuade you. I've tried to break your spirit. I've told you, you suck and you're a tier two, and it's, but you don't, you just keep going and you don't give a fuck what I say. And that's, that's respectful, man. You, you believe in yourself as much as anyone believes in themselves. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. That's and what champions are made of. Champions yes, exactly. believe in themselves. And a lot of the times these guys, I have, sure. I don't got the freaking 25 inch arms or whatever the heck, however big and strong these guys are, but that's I can over the years. It's just going to keep on building up on me. I have a lot what other people don't have, and it's the unlosing spirit. Like I, even if I lose, it, take a quick loss. Some guys they get burnt down and they oh shit, I'm done. To me, it's that's just that like you wake me up now. You're done. It's yeah. I'll tell you to your face. Okay, do it again. It won't happen. I, I was super match in like two years. I think. I think I was fucking fortunate to, to ref the match between you and um, LBJ. And for people that don't know, this is a six foot four, four hundred pound man. And who, who had one year of, of steady, intense arm wrestling training to prepare for him, for, for Brendan. And um, he just was fucking clueless. Every adjustment you made, he was frustrated. He didn't know what was going on. Um, and he gave you matches. I mean, those were, yeah. those were some long matches. He just yeah. couldn't get what he wanted, and you were patient. And, and just Feel. sheer out, out, out arm wrestled him big time. That was fucking great to watch. Yeah, that match destroyed me. Like, I was pretty busted up for a little while. I actually still got some clicks and clanks in my yeah. own. But, yeah, I have no... 
I have no vision of myself playing anybody that size ever. I don't think I don't need his to. hand. His <laughs> hand has to be bigger than Devin's, right? His hand was massive. Yeah, he's it was the biggest hand, probably about the size of Jeff Dave's, except the yeah. right. What? Uh, maybe not as thick. Maybe not as big. Actually, I shouldn't say that, but monster hand, biggest. Yeah. It was the strongest man I've pulled. For sure, strongest man. Like I mean, he beat a lot of tough dudes. Like he beat Justin Major, like it was a joke. He beat Pocket, yeah. like a joke. Ooh. And um, I've never. I mean, I've got wins. Lot. I've actually never lost to Justin Major. I've, ne- I've I've beaten Alex just as much as he's beaten me. Yeah. So you can't say all oh, this and that. I've beaten you just as much as if you beat me. And you've always been a weight class above me. So I like Alex. He's a good lad. But I haven't seen him in a while. I'm not too sure what's going on with him. But I know there's been a lot of controversy between us because I was the 220 champ. He was a oh, the open weight champ. We're both young, but he can't he can't uh, claim glory over me because we won against each other the same amount of times. He can't say oh I was tired because that's boo hoo. All right, I I actually when I beat him in Ottawa, you were there, Chris. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually won an award that day for the most arm wrestling matches, and I still came off to get wins on him. So. To me, that's just an excuse. If I lose, I don't make excuses. I just better myself. That's the way I am personally. But yeah. another thing, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't. I don't think. Um, although I, I think your 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 weakness is your just raw strength. I don't think I've ever seen you out arm wrestled ever. Um, you're always the better arm wrestler at the table. You never get out cheated, out willed, out adjusted. Um, I compare you to, to Evan. Of course, Evan's a much much fatter, drunker version. But um, you're both excellent arm wrestlers in your own right. Yeah, well, obviously that's where it started for me, right? Like, well, how I got into the arm wrestling game was Alan Ford was my neighbor. And, I mean, over he always told me he was an arm wrestler. I've always been a good arm wrestler. Same with you guys. Before you guys joined arm wrestling, I imagine within your groups, you guys were always the macho arm wrestler guy, right? You guys were always the guy, oh, arm wrestle this guy. That's what it was for my case. I wasn't good. I just held people and just went sideways because that's what I thought it was all about. But yeah, that's how it started for me. I just, I, Alan Ford and Evan, they took me under their wing. They showed me the basics. And now it's not necessarily them teaching me. We all just kind of train together and teach each other now. So it's pretty cool how it works like that. <laughs> that's cool. You mentioned Justin Major. Now you said you, did you say you've never lost to Justin Major? I've never, I've never lost to him. When was, the last, when was the last uh, time you arm wrestled him? Last time, like last year, I think. That's and, impressive. Uh, yeah, my right arm, I've never lost to him. Left arm, he's got one win on me through fouls, I believe. I believe. Um, he's one I of the guys that I think will eventually be on top of the super heavyweight division. Yeah, I agree. He's He's got some insane power. But like I said, I'm really, really good at exploiting people. Yeah, and Justin's so raw and has so much, such a higher ceiling. But he does um, – it seems like the bigger the match, um, he can be tentative and shy away, and he doesn't have that aggressive – Come fucking get me attitude like you are. You, you. I, I was at your first tournament in Alexandria. Yeah. Back in 2015, yeah. Yeah. you showed up in a fucking flannel shirt and a fucking work boots, and you were fucking 18 or 19 or something. Yeah. And uh, you didn't give a fuck. You would pull anyone that day, and you didn't shy away from anything. And and I said to myself, this guy, when when a man cannot be intimidated and cannot be backed off, already he's he's got a foot in the door, right? Uh, yeah. Be very nice. yeah. I actually got a screenshot from uh, 2000 and. Let's say 2016, it says, BLM is the future of Canadian arm wrestling. And it says, Chris Gawley posted. Did, no, did I say that? Yeah, wow. I got a screenshot of it. I'm going to hold it against you. <laughs> wow. Wow. And then Essa Torkman chimed in two minutes later and said something nasty. Funny thing is, <laughs> funny thing is, is I've actually never beaten Chris. He's actually. I've never beaten, beaten Chris either. That's right. Hey. You fuckers couldn't touch his left arm. Right? Yeah, but not the left. <laughs> Okay. Uh, last time, uh, I only had one match against you, but I think I, I think I bounced you off the table, and I got a quick start, and then you just got me no hook, and it wasn't wasn't. Cool. Remember, remember after the um the fucking freedom tournament thing we did, and we pulled for hours on that fuck that freedom table, <sighs> man. I gave you some good matches on that one, of course. Yeah. Um, you can drag me all over the place, but um. Yeah, freedom table. I don't think. I mean, Devin could barely hold on to me in that tournament. Yeah. I have. So, I'm so. Like, man, I'm like a fucking spider monkey when I get onto that air medicine table. I can pull from anywhere. Anywhere. And maybe I'm not the super strong guy, but whenever, when, when I get locked in, man, it's, I'm either breaking or winning. So that's my experience. Who'd, I'm either breaking Who'd you or kill that day? Steve Morno? It was Steve Morno yeah, you beat on that day? I've never lost to Steve Morno. Yeah. My right arm. Left arm, he. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I think I have one. Uh, I think I, I lost one match against Steve with my right. But ever since then, it was. I think I had to. Yeah, that's why. I, I was like four pounds overweight 
and I had to be 220. And I lost like seven pounds in like half an hour. And I was just totally dehydrated. I beat him left and then he beat me right. But ever since then, it was, it's not been close between me and him, in my opinion. But the results show because I've never lost to him. So, but he's, he's like, I mean, he's one of those guys where he's a legend, really. I mean, he, I mean, it's it's changed since then, but he's always been a 200 pound guy beating these super rates, right? He's 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 been number one in the world at one point, I think for two years in a row or something back yeah. in 1996 or something. But yeah, yeah. He's a, couple of, a couple of shout outs from the comment section. We got Jody Williams, Candy Passmore. Shout out to you guys, Wild yeah, Tony, and one of our most enthusiastic fans. He's asking Chance Shaw versus BLM. Who wins that match? Uh, Devin says it's not close. I've never pulled chance. Devin has pulled chance. I mean, he's like 200 and like what, 360 pounds right now? Like, or something. Like Devin has him? Devin has him over you? No, me over him. He says okay. it's not close. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, I never pulled the guy. He's a one trick pony. Say he pins me once, he's never going to do it again. He'll do the same thing. He's going to come at you the same way every time. I will pull you 100 different ways in about five seconds. So, that, my adjustments are so quick and, and finesse. I don't got the super house horsepower, but it's coming. I'll say that. So right if, if you're super balanced and super versatile, and you can adjust to any 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 discipline. But um, do, would you say you're a top roll first, hook secondary, or is it's it super 50, weird? 50? Super super weird. So my left, it's like for me, it's like driving a steering wheel. I'm like this when I pull, really really weird. So my left, it's all outside, really good in the straps. My right, I got some crazy crazy drive. I'll come at you full shoulder committal press. Yeah. And then roll out at the last second. My left, it's more one dimensional, as in I like to just all, I'm all hand and up pressure with my left. Really, I'm impossible to hook, in my opinion. I'm like a hooker's nightmare. So, yeah, my left is more of an outside game it's in the straps. My right, it's more versatile, in my opinion. And more, okay. I got more balls with my right. I'll come at you fully shoulder committal, where my left, I don't got as much inside drive. My elbow is not as stiff, I guess you can say. Dude, you were shoulder committal in your first fucking year. You were driving yeah. in, diving in in your first fucking three months. I remember that. Fast and fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that takes I, balls. That's how that's shit gets had. broken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I've had a lot of injuries in my right arm. I never went to the hospital ever, but it clicks and clanks every day. I'll tell you that. But, uh, yeah, like, I can't straighten my right arm at all anymore. And uh, I, I can't pronate. I've never been able to pronate with my wrist. So as far as I can go is this, is neutral. So there's something, Devin says it's a gift. I don't know why, but maybe one day I'll, I'll figure it out. But I have no pronation. But I'm super hard to turn over. It's really weird. And I can cup like a son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was well, going to ask you. I, Go ahead, Gobby. I say, Walt, you say you're limited, but Walt titles have been won with elbows that cannot extend. So why yeah, not? Right. You know? yeah. I mean, sometimes exactly. what you can't do helps you, right? These limitations make you champions. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, Candy Pass, I was going to bring this up. But Candy Passmore is asking about it. What is the tattoo on your hand? I know what it is. But. That's my arm wrestling club. Valley High Hookers. I got that like my first year arm wrestling because I fell in love, right? So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lifer now. That is a commitment, man. Yeah. No, don't, you have OA, don't you have OAA on your bicep or your forearm? Yeah, that's whenever I first came on Terry yeah, when I was like, I think 17 or 18. Yeah. And now I got the Terminator on my left arm. Eventually, my whole arm's going to be terminated. I thought it was pretty fucking sweet. So <laughs> That's cool. So what happens if you yeah. move and you end up with another club? It doesn't matter to me, guys. That's where I started, right? That's where I'm I wouldn't really subject myself to a club. I'm a traveler. I'll go pull all over Ontario. I got, any Anytime I go to a tournament, I'm the last guy on the table. I, like, people have know that about me. I'll pull until I can't lift my arms up anymore. So... That's the way I've always been at tournaments, and it's a lot of people ask me a lot of tricks. And a lot of people say, "Oh, you're an asshole, you're cocky," but I'm the first person to like come up to you and tell you, "Like, oh, hey, man, this is what you should have done. Like, try this next time. Yeah. Like, try this. Like, hey, do this. Like, I'll come up to the table and coach guys that that I beat and that don't like me. But it's just because I love arm wrestling. I don't necessarily hate anybody on the table. I just love arm wrestling and the competition. I'm very competitive. That's the way I look at it. So we got a. Uh, what do you got coming up? What's next? You got anything? Right now, like right now, I'm kind of neutral. I'm just, I'm just focusing on my body weight right now and, and staying as healthy and strong as I can. Like I'm, I'm strong right now. Like I don't post all these videos and make YouTube videos. It might help me get more recognition, but I'm unorthodox. I don't really use weights much. Like I use like bricks and I use like 
like blocks and stuff. And I'm a, I'm a pipe player, so at work I crank on like I'm, a, I'm always on pipe wrenches. I do weird stuff, like, but I'm not really like I'm in the gym mainly for body weight and strength now. But uh, I'm not really unorthodox with my training. Pretty cool, a lot of stuff I do, but I don't really tell many people. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, you do have a match booked in August. Yep. You're pulling yeah. Steven. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's a strong guy for sure. Steven who? Steven Marku, I think. Yeah. yeah but he's yeah. asked. Yeah, like I think. I mean, I'm getting. They're helping me out. Get like it's. It's. I got a good deal gig going on for that. But uh, I think as long as I just show up, rested, I don't think I'm gonna have much issues. I mean, Matt Matthews just says he's gonna kill me. I think someone told me. There's people that say yeah, this and that. But it's nobody I've never lost beaten yet. I've beaten, and I mean, people are saying he flattened out Jordan Sill. Like that Jeff Frank guy told me he flattened out Jordan Sill's hand and stuff. I said, that's good. I don't care. I'm not Jordan Sill. Cherry, like, anyway, we'll see what happens. I know he's a big guy, but I told him, I said, if you want to match with me, you got to be at least 220 because this guy's like 260 pounds. So I'm, I, I give the guy a year to get to 220. I'm probably going to be 205 by then. But, uh, He's no, got to get. He's got to get to two twenty. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm not pulling anybody wow. over two twenty anymore. I'm done with it. I, yeah. I have nothing to prove. Why should I? You know what I mean. Now I'm just gonna pull top level guys in my own weight class, travel around and make it worth my while. Well, I don't want to fuck my elbows up when I'm young. I want to have a long career on top. I don't want to be on top for a few years. You know. So that's the way I look at it now. Yeah, I like it. I keep getting asked by Jason Merlo, will Brendan go to Harrisburg in April this year? I don't know. I, I already won it last year. So I won it quite easily, I would say. So maybe I'm going to just further myself. I don't know. If there's anything to offer me, then maybe I'll go. But for me, if I win something considerably easy and walk out of it, I don't want to – I mean, I'll go back to defend it. But, I mean, there's nothing there the game i guess you can say other than another state title so now I'd, I'd rather just go somewhere else that's the way i am i don't think i should backpedal in my opinion you know a lot of guys say, oh do this and that but i mean i've been handed that i've been dealt the hand where if somebody's ranked higher than me then you got to put up money and come to my hometown so why should i not do the same right if somebody wants to pull me and if i'm and i believe i'm ahead of them then you got to come to me and put up the money well, you didn't ask RVJ to come to drive down. I mean, you 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 uh, got in your car and went to New England. So I mean, yeah, you followed that template. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. that's the way. That's the way I'm going to deal. With it. That's the way I'm going to do it now. In my opinion, even Brandon Elsass, he's like, oh yada yada. I'll, I'll get you next time. Well, you got to come up to my front door now and spend the money at the hotels and this and that, and then come pull. Fine. See what happens. <laughs> that's cool. awesome. Yeah. Pausing for Gobby? Nothing? Um, so if you oh, yeah. Candy, that, yeah. that is in August. She's asking when that event, that match is with Steven. Go ahead, Gobby. Your perfect super match right now. I know, Steve, um, let's face it, you're going to win 3 um, nothing. If I've never heard of the guy, he's not going to beat you. But um, if you Hang on a second. Good. Hang on a second before you continue. <laughs> Money, buddy, let's bet. Let's do it. Let's do it. You well, I'm not going to make a bet against the guy on our show. That's disrespectful. I am saying he's no he pushover. He He's no point he I think it is good matchmaking. I really believe that. He's a low. He's a low hand top roller. That's all. He's he's a strong man. That's all he has. That's all he has. He's a strong person, and he's 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 strong man. I don't think he's as smart as me. I don't think he's got as many tools as me. I know he's he, he's going to set up in his position thing and do it three times in a row. Nobody beats me three times in a row. Is he no. stronger than LBJ? Most likely not. And you beat him, right? Uh, oh come on! That's like MMA math. <laughs> no, no, that dude was that dude was strong. I mean, he he's he beating good arm pocket. wrestlers. He's beating good arm wrestlers. That's he he smoked pocket. I mean, the the guy can arm wrestle. Um, Brendan will never lose to a poor arm wrestler. He'll lose to a great, an excellent arm wrestler with more strength, like a Paul Lynn. He will not lose to a guy who doesn't know what our, or an inferior arm wrestler. Um, not I mean, gonna happen. That Paul Lynn comment. I don't know, man. Like, I that's, really, it's, a, that's a backhanded compliment, compliment, man. That's been two years. And I was in horrible shape, and I was drunk and mess, hungover, and I bounced him off the table once or twice, but they, they, they wanted him to win. No disrespect to him. But obviously, when he got me stopped, he didn't beat me super easy, and I was in horrible shape. He was showed up ready, healthy, responsible, as I should have been. But you can't – I don't know. It's different now, man, I think, in my opinion. I think it would be a better match like than – a lot of people would think, to be honest. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a better, you know, better, better match than, than what it was. 
Mm-hmm. But my question to you is, if you can pull any man under 220 in, on the planet, who would it be in a super match format and have six months to train? Uh, Herman Stevens, RBJ. Those, like, I mean, I'd pull those guys. I wanted to pull Herman. And they asked me to pull him. Or no, I got messaged by some, Sean Hancock or something. Yeah. And uh, they wanted me to come down to Mississippi States. I don't know if I, I mean, it would have been on my dime. So I eh, wasn't really looking forward yeah. to that. I wanted to pull Herman. He said no, not no disrespect to him. I mean, but he maybe he had something else in mind, or maybe he's just belittling me. It's one or the other. But yeah. uh, and RBJ, I mean, I've been trying to pull him for a little time, amount of time now. I think it's a good match. To be honest, he he's got bigger arms than me, but he's a very defensive puller until he gets into it. Like, you know, it takes him about five to ten seconds to actually get get where he wants to be. Where I'm at complete strength in a matter of a flash of a blink of an eye. So I think it's a better match. I'm a stronger, younger, better, faster version of Alan Ford. So that's I right, think, you are. Yeah. I think it makes a good match. Yeah, you and Todd Hutchins handicapped that. Uh, me and Todd Hutchins, we pulled on the after table. I was taking his hand multiple times. I was beat up. That that doesn't necessarily matter. I'm not afraid to pull him. Um, he gets to his spot. Obviously, that's his. Stuff. He's got the, he's got the drive from there. But I'm not afraid to pull him. I would I would train and I would be ready and I'd pull him and whatever happens, it would be, that's what happens. And I'd only be one up from there. I'd learn from it and then I'd hunt him down and then I'd come, I'd hunt him down until I win. That's the way I, if I ever lose a match, it never happens again. Wall, con- ha- Wall contacts you in three months. Wall contacts you and they say, we want a super, we have a super match in line. Will you accept you and Ryan Espy right arm, right arm? I mean, I'm like, he's got at least what? 900 pounds on me? No. <laughs> he's coming down to I'm 300. Just, he's coming down. He's coming down. I'll be down to 300. Even at so 300. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it for the freaking for the chance, but I mean, I would, if I lose, it's like, all right, I lost. But if I won, it'd be, it'd be amazing. But I, I'm looking for the middleweights. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. there's the, what is it? There's the Bowens, and then there's the, who else is there? They can be Storm. I think I'm right up there with the, Raining under IBJ. I'm with those guys. I'm with the Paulins. I'm with the Storms. I'm. Ab- I think, in my opinion, I'm above Bowen. And th- do you think Bowen even? Do you think Bowen does anything with you? Does he budge you? I pulled him for about ten seconds before your super match with him. Like we spoke about it the one day, and he took everything, grabbed me in the strap, swallowed my hand up, right, and I just felt him. He has a good sticky spot above the pin line, but that's all he's got. I won't let him get to the strap. It'll be three zero in about flash. I, I think. No disrespect to him. I just that's the way I visualize it. That's how I see it happening. Pretty easy to get to the strap in the WAL though, just by mm-hmm. stalling. I don't know, man. Yeah, true. You're right. That's you're right. But that doesn't matter. I'm I'm still good in the strap. I got I got good strap game. I've pulled I pulled a lot of good strap guys like Evan and Devin, and I'm good in the straps. Like, and now that I'm more focused and responsible now, like with my health. So I don't know how it's going to happen. I think next year is going to be the year of the lemon for sure. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna like be known. It. I'm gonna be known. That's for sure. Yeah, I kind of feel that way about myself too because 2019 wasn't the greatest. 2018 was awesome. 2019, yeah. 2020 is gonna be good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gobby peaked in 2005, but who knows? I'm not done yet. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Gobby, Gobby peaked in the back of a taxi cab somewhere in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. I can idea. Another great thing about my arm mask is a lot of these WL guys and a lot of these high level champions, they're one arm ponies, really. Like they're right, it's all they're all right arm arm wrestling, right? As we spoke from the right arm, but both my arms are pretty high level. Like they're both my left arm is fall has been following my right forever. But it's just I got more balls with my right. If I bang in with my left, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I never had you. Like I, my hand game is is good enough that I never had to bang in. Like I'm really good at avoiding hooks, and but the big issue is people think I don't have a hook, and that's the big big issue is I have an I can hook, and I'm a I'm a smart hooker. I'm not necessarily a grab you and drive you to the pin pie, but I'm an adjusting hooker, and I'm really really tight, and I'm hard to pin in a hook because if you try and pin me in a hook, I'm rolling out like this, and I can get you back into a hook again. You know, so a lot of guys don't think like that. I think that. No. So it's a big part of my game. Yeah. Well, well the, fun, the fun thing with you is there's so many options out there. Like you've got, you take a look at Bowen. Well, you're pretty much going to put him with Bishop. You, we kind of know that match is coming. Mm-hmm. Um, 
RVJ, I mean, who do you stick with him? But with you, I mean, it's kind of intriguing no matter who they put you with. There's lots of options out there for the WAL. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I've always been a WAF-style puller, like the pen pad, not with, not with all the loose refing. A lot of people say I'm really, like, I, I cheat and all this, but I do. I follow referees' commands immensely. Like, I 100% listen to what they want me to do. Sure, I... I mess around a little bit, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not like not listening to the reps. I follow the rules. They say go, so it's on them at that point. Like, <laughs> somebody, yeah, WL is that's different for sure. It's somebody's different. thrown out there that they should put you against Paul in right away. Yeah, I mean, I, I would not turn that match down. I 100% would take the match, but I think I would have. I mean, out of respect to the guys that have been putting the time in, I would have to start at a lower tier, I think. They'd have to put me against, like, a like a Mike Soliaris or, you know, somebody at that tier. What about the strongest something? man that's walking planet Earth right now? Danny Tesh. <laughs> I think Danny Tesh is, a, as well, he's a one, he's got one move and he's very defensive. I think it's a bad match for him because he's catching above the pin line if I, stuck, if I crush him, bring him to the pin line, I'm not going to sit there and keep driving into his arm. I'm coming out. I'm, I'm going to adjust. I'm going to pin him. That's the way I look at it. He's he's stopping right here. And that's where he's staying there until guys get wore out. I'm not going to be an idiot yeah. and keep down. I'm, I'm going to switch it up. And I'll, I'll figure out a way to pin that guy. I would pull him. But those guys, that would be his second match, right? So I, I think they'd probably put me somewhere, even maybe a level like Quinlan maybe, you know what I mean? Somebody who isn't coming off hot, I guess you can say. But I'm going to pull anybody. If they call me and say, hey, yo, we want to pull this match, I'm 100%. Yeah. I'm in. Well, there's a ton of matches, man. I think uh, mm -hmm. I think building somebody back up, like uh, it's either you or I would even put you against a Storm Tolino, and then yep. the winner kind of – the winner rises and the the guy that doesn't win kind of stays flat. Yeah, and Storm's a 210 guy too, like myself. So it would be probably – we'd probably both meet at 210. Like I know they have – they kind of – it's not necessarily like 200 pounds. It's, you know, they kind of make it even. Like Jordan Sells a 235 guy, but he pulls, they make him cut to 210, I think it is. And he their match with Storm, like Jordan Sells and Storm were at 210, I believe. So, I mean, something like that, I, I'd be comfortable with for sure. To me, be, for me to be 200 pounds right now, I, I could do it, but it would take a little strain, strain on my body. But by spring, I want to be walking at like 205, to two, in between 205 and 210. That's where I'll be comfortable. Because when I started at wrestling, I was like 185. But I mean, I was a kid. I didn't have any muscle mass. It was just bone and core. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's where I stand right now is with the storms and at that tier. Below every J, but not a, not a, don't count me out kind of deal. <clears throat> so who's the guy that you would like to watch the most? As far as anyone in the WAL right now, what's uh, if this guy's on the card, you're not missing it. Who's that guy? If I want to watch or yeah. just... Just as a fan. Purely as a fan. As a fan? I like watching... Uh, well, I like I like watching Matt Mask. He, he brings a lot of heat. I've watched him and pull, and he's a, he's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, Devin's fun to watch just because he's such a dick to these guys, but it's funny. Uh, but, yeah, like any of those top two guys that kind of get involved, the, the crowd involved... It's it's cool. It's it's a big part. Like that's what they're looking for. They're not just looking for, like, there's a lot of arm wrestlers out there that can probably crush these guys, but they're not necessarily involved. They don't involve the crowd. They're not exactly high spirited. They're like professionals, right? So, I think I I can get the crowd involved pretty good. I can get them to be on my by the end of the super match. I can get the crowd to be on my side, even if I'm the 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 vigilante or whatever. You know, yeah. the. End I can get the crowd to be on my side by the end of the match because I'm always the underdog. A lot of people underestimate me because of my age and my lack of strength, but it's coming. And as of the years are going on, I'm just getting better and I'm taking better names. I've only been wrestling for five and a half years, and I've, I've been doing pretty good since then, in my opinion. But You had a wall match with CJ Twine, didn't you? Was it yeah. CJ Twine? Yeah. 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 But that was, yeah, that was another... That was just kind of the pre-match, but I, and he was like two fifty or something. I think he was two fifty. I was like two twenty, but no, that's fine. I, I'm looking for to be in the middle eights for sure. There's no point of me being a chubby super heavyweight, really. I, I want to be the strongest I can at a at a weight body weight for now. So yeah, yeah. Have but, a longer um, career too. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. My, my how my tall are you, Brennan? You're fairly tall for your class, right? 
I'm like six foot two and a half, six foot two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a big 200 pound guy. Like I'm, I'm a little, like I still got some loose skin. I got to lose, but I'm a big 200 pounder. Like same as Alan, like me and Alan kind of got the same belt. He's a, he's a big 198. He's tall, six, six foot one or whatever he is and quick. And uh, he's as well. He's, he's a, he can exploit people. I mean, he's. I think he's. He still got some time left. He's gonna come back. He, I don't know if he's gonna necessarily be at, at a level where he was at one point, but I like. I've watched a lot of his style, and I, I. I kind of rebounded off of him from playing with him so much. It started off where he would just kick my ass, and eventually I could just figure something out, figure something out, and now it's I can stonewall him, and um, that's just the way it goes, right? It's like he likes to say he passed me the torch, right? But he's a good guy to learn from. He's actually very, very smart. He's really, very smart arm wrestler. Would you say you learned more from Evan or Alan? Um, Evan probably showed me more technicals, but the thing is with Evan, the difference with Evan and me is I have the tools, the more, more tools available, where Evan, can he can describe them to me, but he can't necessarily do them with me because he's he's just doesn't have the build as I have. He's not exactly close, as close to the table as I am. <laughs> yeah. And um, where Alan... Alan has the tools that match me, match me more. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, Evan probably showed me more of the basics, and then Alan probably showed me more of the next step kind of stuff. Gotcha. Both that'll that'll suit my tools more. Evan can describe things really good, but he can't necessarily do them. Like he's a he's a he's a hooker. Right? He slams in hook and he grinds. Where I can do that because I've showed a lot, learned a lot of my hooking, advanced hooking from Evan, and I learned a lot of the outside strap outside stuff from Alan and I'm fast. So it's a bonus. That's all, sense, yeah. Yeah, that's all I ever had was my speed coming in for like the first two years was speed and tenaciousness. It's all I ever had until I became, now I'm becoming like a man. I'm, I'm stronger. I'm getting, my bones are getting stronger. Now I, now I'm getting strong. Like, and then a lot of guys say I got no side pressure, but I, that's my go-to move is fast. No, yeah. no your right has um, above average side pressure for sure. Yeah. I'm like an up high side pressure, kind of the Travis yeah. Agent style side pressure. Yeah, it's it's levered side pressure, exactly. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm coming over guys. Yeah. Yeah. My, where my left is more of a but take your hand first and then go. Where my right, I kind of grab and come over top real quick. And good in the traps. Right. I like the traps. Yeah, makes sense. Now you mentioned Zlotty. Is that like the goal for next year or are we starting off? Well, I'm going to minimize my tournaments. Like I know everybody wants me to pull this WWA tournament and I had no insult to Abby. I just, it's to me, it's, it's just, it's all it is to me. It's just, it's not going to, I'm not going to gain anything off it other than 700 bucks. And I'd rather save my elbows for something bigger and better. that's going to put me out there more. And um, I'd let somebody, like, I've already won. I've beaten the super heavyweights. I've beaten the 200-pound guys that they have to offer. So, to me, it's it's nothing but but money. And I'd rather, money's good, but I want to make it, like I, like I said, as soon as I put my hand on the table, I knew I was going to be the best in the world. It's just the way I am, believe it or not. And that I can see it, and I know it's going to happen because I have the drive to make it happen. And, like, I will make it happen. It, even if it's five to ten years down the line, I'm only 23 years old. I probably won't make my peaks. I probably won't meet my peak strength. Like I was talking to Mike Gould about it one day for like an hour. He's like, Mike Gould said he wasn't his strongest until he was forty years old. And um, even Crazy George, I was talking to Crazy we George, but we're good chums. And he always says he he says every time, every since he's watched me pull, he said he knew I was gonna be the guy to beat. And uh, and it's it's gonna happen because I'll I'm not just a dreamer. Like, I make shit happen. I go out and I chase my goals. I don't sit at home and wish. Like I go out and I make it happen. Well, that's a big part of what I like to do in my visualization. So, what is the metric by which you measure the best in the world? Is it uh, WAL Hammer? Is it just there's no one left on the hit list? Is it uh, WAF titles? Um, Emeroff? I don't know. It's yeah, that, exactly. I know what you're saying, it, but to me, it would just be getting to a point where nobody can beat you. I guess you could say at your weight class to start, right? You can get your titles, but I mean, WAF is whatever the, all that bullshit that's going on. I don't pay attention to it because it's drama and I hate drama. So to me, it would just be getting to a point where you're just walking through everybody at your weight class and, and you get hunted down. To me, that would be that's the best in the world. Everybody wants a piece of you. You're beating everybody. 
And like that's how Devin did it, right? He, I don't, he never won no WIF. He got to a point where he was beating everybody and people were hunting him down. Everybody wanted him. So if, if I get to that point in my weight class, I want to be able to keep it there as long as I can, right? Like I'm not, I can't see myself being the best in the world overall, the way that the sport is now, right? These guys are like 400 pound, like steroid eating monsters. And it's just, it, even no matter how good you are, you just can't beat them just because of how strong they are. Like, But uh, if I can get to my best in the world, my weight class, like, I mean, say the best, the best 200 pound arm wrestler in the world, I guess you can say. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> So the like, thought of going to a um, a WAF or an IFA with the drug testing and a little bit more, I'm not going to say a level playing field, but I'm going to say a little bit more of a level playing field. That entices you a little bit or does it just not matter? Yeah, no, it does. And a big advantage I have is these guys that are all peaked out on, on roids. Is I'm like a walking steroid. Like a lot of people say that about me because I'm young and I, I'm like full of testosterone. I'm strong. I don't need that right where I am right now. I'm not saying I'm not going to be an idiot and say I'm not going to do steroids because I don't know what's going to happen 10 to 15 to 20 years down the line. Because if there's someone's, if all of a sudden the prize money is $50,000 and if I have a good chance of winning, I'm going to do whatever the hell it takes to win that money. You know what I mean? But I don't need it right now and I'm natural where I am. And I think. That's good for me because of my age as well, right? But give me five five years, five more years. I'm only going to get better and stronger, and I'm still going to be natural. My, I have age on people, so that's a big thing advantage that I see myself over these guys that are in their 40s, you know, at their peak strength, juiced out, still winning. At my age, I'm not too – like, I'm behind them. I'm not going to say I'm with them, but the area in between me and these guys, it's not I'm impossible and I'm still natural at my age. So that's the way I look at it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You you are, I I agree with what Mike Gould said to you. I don't believe that a guy, uh, an arm wrestler peaks until they're later on than most athletes would be, barring no injury. All the great teams you have gotten there once they hit their 40th birthday and into their 40s and to maintain that actually even into their 50s. It's, it's, it's health, too, right? You just got to keep your bones strong, man. That's the bit most important part. One stupid slip-up, and you, your elbow's done, and you're done. You have no more arm wrestling. So I got to really focus on keeping my arms healthy because if my arms are already starting to coil up a little bit, I got to start watching myself. I got a lot of torque in my tendons. Like My, my arm has a natural twist in it now, so I got to really start watching that, keeping an eye on that because I don't want to stop arm wrestling. It's all I about. <laughs> You still have full extension of your right elbow, your right arm? No. Oh wow. No, and it's twisting. It's got okay. a natural twist in it. I can. I don't know if I can show you. I don't know if it'll do anything, but it's my, my arm is not twisting like this. It's, it's pronated over, but all what it's from, it's from all the inside sh- hooking and letting these guys boom, slam, slam, slam. Over time, it's just gonna get so tight and tense that I have a lot of lack of movement. But I got some sticky spots and it's just crazy. Like I've got, I've had guys come up to me and say like, how do you, I don't know how to pin you. Cause all of a sudden they get, they get me out of here. I can be in the most horrible spot. No pronation. I can be outside my shoulder and guys still can't put my arm at the pin line because I'm, I have some of these joint locks like over injuries and then after they reheal, it's, I get so tight and it just doesn't move. It's crazy. I mean, unless these guys break me, but at the level I'm at locally around here, like Canada, the States, a lot of guys think, oh, put them in a hook, but it's a really bad idea. Hook me. Yeah. Plus, your hook is, um, you have, I think your, your wrist is better than your arm. You have such great deep flexion in your, in your hook, which I've talked to you and Devin about, Evan about this. Yeah. How uh, deep flexion, um, there's nothing more important when you're hooking. Uh, you can even give up, have the weaker arm. If you have full flexion and can drive up and into your opponent and get that deep, yeah. um, you could almost be 10% weaker and still get away with that, uh, out of, uh, adjusting and winning. Yep. So that's what I take away when I watch you. You always have the better flexion than your opponent. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm very patient now. Opposed to like when I was first starting arm wrestling, I was really, really horny just to get that pin. I wasn't thinking straight. I was just, as soon as they say go, I'm just going to pin this guy. Now I've came to notice, I was like, all right, as soon as the more and more higher tier you go, you can't be doing that because these guys no. will just do apart. So now I became more patient and I've been focusing on my strength 
And now that I'm getting stronger, these guys still think, oh, this guy's fast. So, oh, he just has this. Oh, he's just got a strong hand. Oh, just do this to him. And they try it, but they still can't manage to pin me. So it's been going good for so far. Like last year was a really good year. I didn't lose. I haven't lost a single tournament. No matter where. Yeah, I'm just curious about something. Uh, we're, we're at the stage where we're ta- talking about bottom eight uh, point two. Um, it looks like it's, you know, Kingston area right in your backyard. It looks like Evan's going to be part of the roster. Why weren't you asked or why did you not show interest? Because your your charisma, uh, talent, uh, personality, you, and you're, you're local. Uh, yeah. For me, you'd be the perfect fit. I, I think it's because I don't make enough YouTube videos, probably. But uh, I'm a, to me, I'm a professional. Yeah. That, that's a big part of it, obviously, is the entertainment part. But I wouldn't want to – I don't like to make a fool out of myself for other people's – for other people's game yeah. enjoyment. Like I'm a pro. I'd like to arm wrestle and I like to take names and I hunt people down. It's fun. I'm going to go like, maybe I'll be a special referee or something. I'll go referee or I'll just be there to just commentate or something. But I'm not sure I'd like to pull in that tournament because a, I'd probably walk away with it and B, um, like I said, it wouldn't really gain anything except obviously video exposure and stuff. Right. I'll I'll go because it's a fun time, but I don't really see myself pulling in that. And that's like you—you you had a reason. You had you wanted to pull Bowen, and th- that's what it was was for you. Like I don't think you gave a shit about anything else after that. No, 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 no. So like I don't think you went there to win the bottom mate. I think you went there just to pull Bowen. And for me, unless they had say like RBJ in the tournament, then I would pull for sure. But yeah. uh, that one guy there, Till Bar- Till Bronze, he put up a thousand dollars of his own money. For somebody else to for somebody to host the RBJ BLM match, and nobody responded, and it got like hundreds of likes and comments. Me and me and RBJ both showed interest, but nobody wanted to put up the other thousand bucks. It was like yeah. somebody matched my thousand dollars, and uh, he said he was he would he would pay for our stay and our travel, and I was like game on, let's do this. And uh, but I think a big part of why Rob doesn't want to pull me obviously like, right now he's on top of the mountain. And I don't blame him for not pulling me because it's a, it's like, all right, say so he beats me. Sure, he shuts me up. Doesn't really gain gain a whole lot. If he loses, it's like game over for him. If I beat RBJ, he loses a lot of his platform. Well, and also in his in his um in his league, right? He's he's the top dog. And between you and him, according to that league, you're notches not one notch, two, but you're three, four notches down. So for him. He believes, or it's in his best interest to have you, if he ends up pulling you, to have you come up the ladder. And and Wall believes the same thing, right? Um, you know, it's kind of yeah. like Rocky having a fight with a, a street bum outside the ring. No one gains, okay. right? except the, except except the street bum if he can knock him out. So they want to see that in the match, and they want yeah. to see the climb up. But why would he, why would he pull? Why is he pulling these other tournaments then against these guys? Dude, I'm, I'm the guy that fucking tried to fucking troll the shit out of him to pull you in New England. Right? Yeah, I know. I, tried to, um, I, I just don't understand why he would pull five years in a row, brag about winning it five years in a row, and then not pull because of this reason. It's like... I, well, I, I know why. It's because of the it was the the Matt Mask phenomenon that we saw. So that's how it went. Like, he, uh, he got guys that are on top of WAL. They go to these tournaments and somebody beats them. And yeah. all of a sudden, WAL started... You know, yeah, exactly. Uh, discouraging arm wrestlers from competing at these other events. Yeah, they don't want the they don't want the prodigy to lose, right? Because they, right. they lose. Well, and, and, and or if they do lose, they gotta defense, lose on their show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in Rob's defense, he was contacted by by uh, the wild, wild brass to uh, to not pull you, right? It's not in, it, to not pull New England. It's, it's not in their best interest or his. They gain nothing, and he gains nothing. Yeah, and I understand that. So in his defense, it wasn't really his call. No, but that's what he says. That's yeah. what he says. But, I mean, just the day before, he said he was going to pull. That's what kind of got me intrigued. But whatever. Hey, if I, was in his, if I was in his position, I would really think my matches out too. Make them count. When you're at that top, you only got so many pulls after, you know, like at that level. I'm not saying he's going to go downhill from now on, but at that level, it's like make it worth your while. Make, you know, if you're going to get paid – if there's going to be a BLM or BJ match, it's going to be like five to six to seven thousand dollar match. It's not going to be no two medals out of yeah. New England's. I mean, I, I walked away with like I think it was eight hundred dollars American from winning, but I mean, is that really worth risking the loss where you can be getting you know a good amount yeah. of money for that match? And yeah. let's face it, we don't want 
one of you coming up the B bracket with a big match and skews the result. We want a fresh for fresh three out of five, or you know, we, that's what the world wants to see. It's going to happen, whether it happens wall or wherever. Eventually, it's going to happen, and it'll draw a lot of interest for sure. Yep. And I think I'm only getting stronger, and uh, I have age on my back too. Where yeah, when you get to a point, you can only get so much stronger naturally. I mean, I don't think he's going to rise up the ladder as quick as I am. Eventually, it's no. just going to be this, right? We're just going to get to a point. We're going to meet, and then I'm going to still go up. He yeah. might go up, but he's not going to go up as quick as I am. Yeah. You know? Your best the years, there's, there's no argument that your best years are in 10 years plus. Yeah. No argument. No. Unless you quit or a massive injury and you decide to quit, your yeah. best years are going to be 35 to 45. Yeah, Easy. and that's even, that's even yeah. Devin, right? Right. Like, I think, in my opinion, I'm light years ahead of Devin. Because all right, we started both at the same time. Uh, he told me one day, he's like, he didn't become best in Canada until he was like 25 or something. And I think in my weight category, I was the best in Canada, I think, as of about a year and a half ago. And, um, I mean, I'm only 23 now, so. And that's a good comparison because um, if you look at Devin at his age, when he was your age, he was um, banging side. He was a grinder. He blew his elbow against Earl because he was grinding. You, at, at your stage, um, compared to him, you're adapting and mastering the sport at a higher rate than he was. Now, he mastered the sport now. Even at, at 35, you can argue the man you arm wrestling as well as anyone, but not at 23. You at 23 have reached the mastery, in my opinion. Uh, there's, there's nothing about arm wrestling that you have yet to um, learn other than higher Getting levels stronger. of horsepower. Yeah, horsepower. Stronger so you're, in that respect, you're higher than him or uh, on the – a better path than he was. Yeah. So, so the future is bright, no doubt. Yeah. yeah so you put a 23 year old Devin against a 23 year old me. It, uh, even though he was probably, I think he was, he was still, a, I think, you know what, he may have been like a 220 guy back then. Eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you put him against me at the same age, I don't think it would be. It's interesting. Well, I don't know if you win. It's interesting as hell because he might have had the better arm. I'm just saying that you are a better arm wrestler at 23 than he was at 23. Yeah. Um, the, it, it, it remains to see. How you, how you end up fulfilling that ceiling. Yes, because he's a super heavyweight, right? I'm yeah, not, but it looks, for me yeah. to be 270 pounds, it's like, I got to be poking my ass. Like five yeah, he has a bigger frame. Yeah, 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 he has a bigger frame, let's face it. Yeah. Well, yep. 100%. I want to ask one question here, and then I got another one for you, BLM, but I got to ask Gobby. The question is, and I know you've seen it, will Chris Gobby accept the bottom eight again if invited? Um, I'd never be invited. Uh, we know for a fact that um, what I Devin, <laughs> Devin, Devin despises me and, and through association now despises you because you associate with me. That level of, of hatred alone, the only way I can get in the bottom eight is if I agree to a no-holds-barred fighting match with him where I can get um, tremendously injured, and then he'll agree and give me 5000 Other than that, you won't see me anywhere near that because he doesn't want me anywhere near that unless he can take the opportunity to hurt me or injure me badly. So the answer is, would I accept? I'd love to arm wrestle. I mean, I was paid last year and it was fun, and but that will never happen because there's too much. Um, he will not bring me in unless um, it's at my um, demise. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, but uh, BLM, you probably know this a little bit more first time than we do. But so <laughs> I won't ask you to elaborate. So, how have you ever pulled a guy like um, Mark McPhail? We'll say. Somebody around that weight. So we're talking. We're talking now, guys that are uh, around your own weight class in Canada. Have you pulled McPhail? I've never pulled him, but I've won tournaments that he's placed lower than I have. Interesting. So, like, I mean, he has wars with Steve Morno. He's lost. He loses to Steve Morno. Alan Ford kills him. I I don't know, man. You know what I mean? I'm beaten. It's hard. I know. I obviously know matches make make matches, but I'm walking through these tournaments, getting to the finals. It's not these guys say, "Oh yes," but you're you're winning through speed. But it's not my problem. No. Like, if you if you decide to go up grind guys at that your own risk, if you I'm going to tournaments to win. I'm not going to have yeah. match. So, yeah. in my opinion, I'm not too sure if it'll be close. I know he's, he's good. He's got a good. He's got a good move. I don't know if he'll work against me. I think I put him in a strap. It'll probably go straps. It's either a flash pin for my sake, or it'll go straps, and then I win. Because obviously he's got that ducking quick down press, and um, it'll probably he'll probably slip, and he'll probably try a strap. That's his best move against me is to try and get me in a strap and see if he can get me outside my shoulder and press me. If can he do it? I don't know. I don't think so. I talked to one guy today who I think 
makes for an intriguing match with you. But then he told me today that he's thinking about retiring. And we all know that our musters don't mean that when they say it. They're just taking a break. I mean, they, they might mean it at the time. But it's Tyrell Wojciechowski. And uh, Tyrell, the, he might be the one guy that I would say. Could, I don't know. Yeah. So my opinion on that is he has worried with Mark Harrison. I uh, grabbed Mark Harrison, smiled at him, looked him in the face, and brought him to the pin line. So I think Tyrell, he, he was winning against Mark, except Mark was bashing him to the pin line, getting fouls, because he's, he's, he's always off the pad. He's, he's going too quick. But, uh, yeah, Mark, Mark's actually – a lot of – he's another guy like that. Like he, he was smashing Brandon's Lorma like he was a joke. He was beating Simon Perron. Like he was beating some tough dudes when uh, I was beating these guys as well, just easier, you know? So it's hard to just say that I can beat these guys or they can beat me if I haven't pulled them. All I can do is just compare right. point the same guy that they've they've pulled, right? So Tyrell, like I said, I'm pretty sure he's got the winning the winning record on a lot of guys in Canada, right? But I've beaten guys that have given Tyrell wars or or, you know, when I've beaten them a lot easier. That's all I can say to that. I'm not gonna say I can beat the guy because I never have and I don't I'm not like that. But I think I will win because of the people how easy I beat guys that he has battles with. So that's all I can say to that. That's probably the best assessment you can give. I do like the fact that, you know, there might be some matches out there for you still in Canada, but man, it's a tough one to. Mm -hmm. There is. But I think those guys got to come to me. I'm the reigning 220 guy, really. And I mean, I didn't go to nationals last year, but the guy that won nationals at 220 was like, who? I don't even know. I don't recall. Steve Morneau. Steve Morneau. Okay. He won nationals in like a 20 man class and he pulled the grandmasters the day before. So, I mean, the, I mean, whatever, like it's and uh, at 200 pounds, it's like Alan Ford and Mark McPhail and Steve Morneau in Canada and Jake Charles. Sorry, but actually, no, sorry, Brian Tamblin. He's, he's got back into the game. I pulled off the Brian Tamblin on the side table and my hand was way too much for him. I pulled him in a hook. That's his best bet against me. But I don't know if he gets there. We we pull that like I go to every summer. I go to Nick Manchester's. He puts a big practice party on, and there's like 40, 50 arm wrestlers there. And it was me and George on the table, like last guy standing, and I was the only guy to pin George. So other than that, it's uh yeah, there's Brian Talman. He's a tough cat. Like he just came off of a win over Jay Charles, like three zero, I think it was, and like dominant, held him, brought him in a hook, pinned him. So, I think the biggest your biggest nemesis. I think the best chance, the best. Uh... Canadian puller under 220 that can beat you, in my opinion, is a focused Bill Cameron. Yeah, you're right. And I've beaten him. I've never lost to him. He's but he, never he has, he's never beaten you? Never. My right arm's never been pinned by Bill Cameron. He's, giving, right? you tough ma- he's giving you tough matches, though. Yes. Yeah. At my own. But that's whenever I don't want to. F- he's the type of guy, we're good friends off the table. So if I, if I take him, I flash him, sure. And then he'll be like, hook me. And I, I have an ego, right? Like, oh, you think I can't hook? Oh, okay, we'll yeah. bang a hook. We'll bang into a hook. I'm not ripping through him. In my right. opinion, in a hook, fully committed, Bill Cameron is the toughest guy, probably under 240. Even though he's like 215, wherever he is, 220. I'm telling you right now, the guy is like, it feels like a concrete. Yeah. Hydro. I'm telling you, the guy is like a concrete hydro pole. You cannot, once he's committed, there's no pulling through that guy in a hook. You've got to take his hand. I've never felt anything like it in my life. It's it's pretty impressive. Yeah. The first time I met Bill, or I pulled, or I seen Bill at a tournament, you were probably five years old. Um, Bill, yeah. Bill's been in it for a while. Yeah. I know that. I never knew that about him. But he's been beat. He beat Brian Tamblin when Brian Tamblin was on top of his game, and he doesn't travel. It's crazy. Yeah. I wish that, like, yeah. I seen him bounce Jeff Dave off the table. <laughs> it's it's pretty wicked, man. Uh, Brian Brian Tamblin in two thousand six to two thousand eight. Devin once claimed there was a super match brewing between him and Sylvain Perrault when Sylvain was a bad motherfucker yeah. and it never happened. But Devin claimed that um, Brian Tamblin might have been the third strongest arm in Canada and after Devin and Earl Wilson. And Brian was like 210. Brian at a certain time yeah. was one bad motherfucker. I know. Well, he was under Mike Gould's wing, right? Yeah. Mike Gould is a super smart coach. Like, oh, he, yeah. he can grab people and he can, he won't, he's not the type of guy where right, this is what I do and all right, this is how I'm going to train you. He can coach you to be well at the tools you have. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what's cool like, about Mike. We talk lots. He can coach somebody with the tools they have to be a successful air wrestler, and that's what's good. Like with Brian, obviously, he was a he was a fast hooker 
I don't, I'm not too sure about Ryan's early years. Like, I've never seen much footage of him, but I know he was fast, and he had a good arm. Is that what he was about? He had a really good sweeping, lat-dragging levered hook. Like, it was full hand control with lat and side pressure, and um, it was just everything in one shot. Uh, good side, good back, good hand. Um, he was much better on the attacking side than the defensive side, opposite from you. He wasn't a grinder, but he had one, kind of like Alan Ford, with a little bit more mustard behind it. Not in terms of so, hit, but in terms of if the match stopped, he can he okay. can slow. If the match stopped in his favor, he can easily slow pull you there. All right. um, but um, he just you just uh, he had a super match with Ian Carnegie at, at Ribfest what four years ago, and he dusted Ian. Ian was like yeah. three sixty, dusted him. I've never I lost mean, Ian Carnegie myself. No, but I'm just saying, and Ian, Ian would, would admit he wasn't at a, a top form, but yeah. I'm just saying, Brian, Brian's Last done time. some eye, eye-opening shit in his career. Uh, he's gone through yeah. top, uh, high and low, but his highs yeah. are insanely high. I've watched that match with Ian, actually, like three to one, and Ian just, just not <coughs> pin. But, I mean, Brian, like, Brian is like, 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 half, like maybe one-third of the size of Ian. So, I mean, that's that was really cool, man. So, you put, you put Alan Ford in his top shape, the best he ever was against Brian Tamlin, the best he ever was. Brian match. Rich. Brian, Brian. Rich. yeah, only because Brian's a little bit slightly heavier, and you got to say, well, Alan's got to take his hand and go over him. And at Brian's best, heavyweights, Rick Heidelbrecht wasn't doing it. Uh, he was beating Rick Heidelbrecht, so you have to believe that Alan's not going to get that done. No disrespect to Alan. Yeah, uh, yeah. Alan no. go down as one of the best, if not the best, 199, 198 Canadian puller of all time. Um, super consistent over two decades. But Brian at his at his top beats Alan at his top. Um, okay, That's in my cool. opinion, and I've seen them both. I'll tell you guys. Um, yeah, the difference in Alan. Alan's so, been so consistent over 20 years. Alan's always been considered the number one or two guy in Canada since like 2001 or something like that. Like, and his know. downside of it is only with his radar. Yeah. Brian was yeah. a bull time pony as well, like myself. That's, that's yeah. another, right? I'll tell you guys. You're a bathroom yeah. story. Yeah. Mark Zaleppa put on a, a round robin uh, event quite a while ago, but there was eight guys invited. I was one of them. Mike Gould was in it. Earl was in it. Tim Bresman came up and was in it. Nice. Uh, That's we, we all pulled. There were eight of us. We all pulled round robin. I think I ended up third behind Earl and Tim. I think Mike was fourth. Uh, I think Rick Heidebreck was in there somewhere. And uh, we all pulled the tournament after. And Brian Pamela jumped in the tournament. And I was gripping up with him. The referee said, go. He flash pin me. And then dropped out of the tournament and went home. <laughs> he must have been. I, I never got my rematch. <laughs> he said, that's all I wanted to do, and he left. <laughs> yeah. What's the lightest you've ever been? You, like, when you, you, Ryan, were you like, you were like a 240 at one point, right? Or were you smaller? I made it to 240. Um, in Poland? And I pulled at the Nationals and Timmins, and I won the left arm. It looks. It kind of looks hilarious because I'm first place on top of the podium. Matt Mask is in second, and he looks gigantic next to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And then um, I ended up fourth place with the right arm. Like, I, I did not feel strong. At 240, I basically starved myself to get from 270 to 240. And uh, Yeah. That 30, yeah, that 30 pounds was muscle. So it wasn't uh, – I already was as lean as I was the same level of body composition at 280 as I was at 240. But uh, yeah, I started myself. I got down there. I did it once. And yeah. Never again. Yeah, even myself. I'm already down like 34 pounds since last winter, and it's all it's been pure diet and just belly fat. But I'm a lot stronger right now, quicker, tighter. So I'm pretty excited to see what how I can do next year at this lower body weight. Um, a lot of our viewers are um, like to know about diet. When you say diet, could you be a little bit more specific? Could you elaborate? Yeah, so I'm just not eating. I'm not eating. I'm not cutting the amount that I eat, just cutting the shit that I eat, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, with my job, I'm gone all day. I'm working. Like, I'm a pipe player, so I'm in, like, a hole all day, shoveling stones and putting pipe in and cranking on giant pipe wrenches. And I use my hands. I don't use tools. A lot of guys are like, man, use a tool or use this. I just use my bare hands for everything I do. So that's a big part of my my endurance is I can be in the setup and I'm in the strap and I'm not, I can feel people getting weaker, but I'm just, I'm just, I can feel just myself blowing up a little bit, but um, a big part of my job helps me out immensely, especially for rehabbing and damage to my arms and my elbows. Like I'm shoveling all day, like boom, boom. So that damage to my elbows, it's helps me on the table because 
when I bang in like that, I'm not nearly getting as blown up or hurt as these guys where they're in the gym, work with their muscles. So obviously my muscle strength is what I've been working on for like the last year, but my bones are super, super strong. Like my bones will never break. Sometimes you can just grab somebody and you can air muscle them and be like, all right, this guy's kind of got some weak elbows. You can feel the joints kind of bouncing and off a little bit. But when I get in and tight, a lot of guys say, your ammo will never break. Like Evan says that about me. Like he knows like when I get to practice, I don't get a whole lot of time on the offensive side. It's guys, these guys like Evan, Brett, all his big brothers, they're all banging into me in a hook. And I'm just boom, boom, boom. That's why I'm getting tough yeah. guys in my own weight class. Your, you know? your, welds, your welds have been set by years of um, grinding at practice. A lot of people want that Todd Hutchins side pressure, but they never want to commit with their elbow at practice, right? Yeah. You do not you do not get that level of welds and side pressure, and you do not get that if you do not uh, live through it at, side, at practice and at low-level tournaments, right? So yeah. you've gotten there through, not genetics, you've gotten there through your – I don't know, competitive intangibles of you know not wanting to lose on the arm wrestling table regardless of the position, right? Yes. That's what it takes. Stronger guys too, right? Yeah. A lot of guys go to practice and like, oh yeah, do this. Oh, but you can't do this. I go to practice to get my arms ripped apart. If my arm is not bouncing off the pin line at least fifty times, then I'm not ha- happy when I'm going home. But I'm like I said, me, it's always me on the table. Like I'm it's well, we take turns. Like say if Evan's got a big match coming up, we'll beat the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. If Alan's got a big match coming up, we'll beat the shit out of him. And it goes for me as well. A lot of guys will they'll be banging me out and I, Evan won't let me go home until I can lift my arms up. And uh, it shows. In a lot of my matches, when I when I'm really focused, it's it's all I feel like it's impossible for me to lose. That's just my mentality. I'm not saying it's factual. Like, say, if you put me up against John Brzezink right now, I'm going to think that, in my mind, coming up to that match, I, don't, I think it's not close. I think that I will just grab him and he look at him. And I had a lot of people, like, laugh at that about me. They say, oh, you're stupid. But to me, it's just it's my spirit and it's my mentality. I'm not necessarily saying it's factual. But if I can believe it, it's just that much more of an advantage. Mm-hmm. You know? If I feel like I'm the best in this, like, when I was coming in against LPJ, my my pre match like pump up against any shoot match I have like I just I get so wound up like I almost feel like I want to cry because I'm so wound up and I feel like this guy is trying to I feel like this guy is just trying to take everything away from me and I tell myself I'm the strongest man in the world I can't be beat like a lot of guys listen to music but all I do is I tell myself that I'm the best there is and I'm the best there ever was and it's impossible to lose I knew coming into that big match against that big guy is like all right I don't want to do this but it doesn't matter I'm too strong he can't beat me I think I could have. I honestly, when I was gripping up with that guy, I think I could have just hooked him, and I still think he, I don't think he was going to go through my arm, man. I had so much adrenaline, and I believed well, in myself so much. Man, he was opening up. Every every second he opens up, you get tighter. So, I mean, he yeah. arguably was, had the stronger arm. Hell yeah. Um, and hand, he just didn't know how to pull in the strap. But every, yeah. he, he kept opening, and you just, out, you were just more patient and adapted better. Um, yeah. That's arm wrestling, right? The stronger guy doesn't always win. Um, but, I mean, you were better at, you were just better conditioning. You were just a better arm wrestler. But, okay. Yeah. Um, I even so cut weight for that match. I even cut weight for that super match just because, just to prove a point, I was I was about 231 about a week and a half before, and I weighed in 220.0. But now I'm walking at 213. And, uh, well, sorry, like 214. Like If I'm fully hydrated and full of supper, I'm like 215. I haven't actually weighed myself in the morning. I should, but... So, so to get back to my original question, when guys like Evan Bagoyan and John Laba are having... A bag of hot dogs and a six pack of beer for lunch. What are you having? Well, I'm I'll have usually like a pretty big supper, but throughout the day I'm just snacking on like protein bars. I'm yeah. eating I'm drinking a hell of a lot of water. But I'm I have a really high protein diet now and I just cut all the crappy McDonald's and this and that out. Good Even though it's easy, it's easy to do because especially with my job where it's you're gone all day, you don't have the time. Like I eat a lot of spinach. Like I eat a lot of spinach and uh I try to get full, but not on the carbs and the crappy stuff. I still eat carbs, but it's like yeah. I don't. I mean, you can't you that. can't have a physical job like you do and not have carbs. I mean, come exactly. on. Um, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I get that. Well, good for you, man. Cutting out the junk is huge. Yeah, a lot of protein bars, man. I got protein and anything that'll just. I'm always on the go, but yeah. I lost a lot of my weight just from sweating. A lot of it is just the sweat. Working in like plus forty all day, thirteen hours a day. It's that's, and for me, it, it that helps my mentality too and my spirit. Like I got it, like even if anything in life, I got like a you can't tell me I can't do something mentality. Like, if you think I can't do it, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do it two times higher than you think. 
no matter what it is, I've always been competitive. Like I did MMA for years. I did hockey, basketball, football. No matter what I did, I was an all-star athlete. I was the, like, I won. What did I do? Like I, I was an MMA for like, I think seven years of my life. And I've, I never lost a match. It was just amateur level. Like I was just a kid. Like when I was 12 years old, my sense, had to put me in the military class because I was too competitive and I was beating these kids up and it's just, and I wasn't even bigger, bigger people than me. It's just cause I'm so competitive no matter what it is. And, that's what I, but I did hockey, football, I was an all-star defensive line, and uh, I would just lay guys out all the time, no matter how big they were. I was on, I was even on offensive line, and I was, I was pancaking these guys the size of Ryan because I'm so, off, I'm so explosive with my, my strength. I'm very explosive, and that's why I've been working on my slow static strength, but my explosive strength's pretty freaking impressive. Like, I wish I can show some people. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I always said if you can pass on genetics to a child and, and you had the option of only had so many points you can use and it was either all going to go to intelligence and talent or sheer will and self-belief, I'd rather go with sheer will and self-belief because they'll never, they can never break, right? They'll always keep plotting forward and eventually get what they want. They yeah. cannot be dissuaded. They cannot be disappointed. They won't, you know, so I figure those, those intangibles are huge. Um, and of, of course, we have both. It's, it's unlimited, but yeah. yeah. Well, the Muhammad Ali, for instance, he wasn't the biggest, strongest guy. He was just had so much heart. Right. He never, he could never lose. If he, he'd rather die than lose, right? He, he was not, he didn't have the gifts that you know Mike Tyson had. The guy had knockout power, and he was built super tight and super strong. Like Muhammad was, what was he like? What was he like? A two hundred twenty pound guy, maybe? Yeah, yeah he could yeah. make like do it. Yeah, yeah, he probably even lighter, I and mean, he didn't, wasn't big. He probably yeah. wasn't strong of a man. No, he gave he away 40, 50 pounds to George Foreman, I think, and Spanks. He was giving away weight to those guys, yeah. Yeah, and he became, he's known as one of the greatest just because he he believed in himself to the point where nobody could nobody could tell him he couldn't do anything. Well, and much like you, he didn't win on sheer force and power. He, he uh, a lot of adapting, a lot of head games, a lot of craftiness. Like, he just outsmarted everyone. He was an incredibly yeah. masterful boxer without yeah. having a wicked knockout punch, right? It's, yeah, it's exactly. It carries over to arm wrestling. You don't have that Alan Ford one bang pin uh, ace of spades. You have uh, a full arsenal of weapons you can use and adapt to beat your opponent one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's yep. kind of different. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool, man, the way, how you can just compare different sports and stuff. Yeah. A lot of it, it just comes from the heart. Some people just don't have heart. Some people just want to yeah. post pictures of medals on Facebook so their family and friends can see it. Like, look at me. I got first place at... Uh, an arm wrestling tournament, and you go, oh, look at me, and I'll tell all my friends I'm a pro arm wrestler, but I couldn't care less about that shit. Like, if I didn't, I wish I never had social media. I wish social yeah. media even existed. I just show up, and I do what I might, what I say I'm going to do. I'm not a liar. Like, I don't lie. If I say yeah. I'm doing something, watch on Facebook. When's the last time you've seen me say I'm not going to do something and go and get my ass kicked? No, no, you're, yeah, we, we, no? yeah you're, you're ballsy for sure. Yeah. I've always um, categorized pullers when they come to practice uh, one or two ways. It's ability to deal with pain and wanting to stick in and, and absorbing pain or when as soon as it gets hard they get the fuck off and they reset their hand and say let's go again yeah it's the guy that's willing to deal with a little bit of pain and fight through not great positions much like yourself um i find i don't know if it makes for a better career it's hard to say but i find it more uh, a lot more admirable anyway yeah i agree too. and there's some guys out there that are definitely stronger than me i mean you know oh, what yeah. i mean even in canada like there's a lot of guys that are stronger man than me but that's like I said. That's that's an attribute in a in a sport with so many options. You know, just so many options in our sport. Yeah. yeah. John Milne in his heyday used to used to say, um, "If the match stops, um, I can't be outwilled." Right. Much like Devin did, he adopted the same philosophy. But John, for about a two three period uh, year period between two thousand ten and or nine and twelve, uh, he was like that. He he just wanted to stop the match and believed he could, especially in a two out of three or a three out of four or yeah. even a four to seven. Yeah. He's and the longer it went. The better chance he had. Yeah. He's beaten some tough dudes, and I was happy to beat John Milne. I beat him three zero, and he showed up. Rib fast. I'm Rib telling you right now, he was strong, ready, and he was ready to kill me. He was red and you, ready. You <laughs> actually retired him that day because I don't think he yeah. ever pulled after that match. That was his retirement match. Yeah. That was his swan and song. And I think, and I think he was happy. He was happy to yeah. lose to me. He knew. All right, this is this kid is the champ right now. He's living and breathing, and arm wrestling is everything he does. So he he was strong. He was ready. I, yeah, was, did, I banged in with him. People said, don't hook him, don't hook him. I hooked him yeah. three times in a row. Actually, sorry, I hooked him twice and I flashed him the second match. Third match was war as well. But it's kind of, he was he was on an underneath defensive hook and you were on a tight levered high yeah, hook. So, I mean, exactly. you outhooked him, but you, you outsmarted him in a hook. It was, you know, yeah. uh, which is a, an ideal levered hook. That's what you want to do. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he just didn't have your hand and wrist, uh, you know. Yeah, exactly. He was he's a power puller, just like oh, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but like, look at whatever I was. Look at the two hundred pound. That two hundred pound. I was maybe about eighteen or nineteen at the time. Remember in Ottawa at the original Ottawa Open, well, Eric Rusin had that two hundred pound man. You were there, I think, too, right? Yeah. He had the two hundred pound round robin. Jake Carroll won, but my second super match was against Alex Rebeck. People like Devin lost money on that match. I ended up beating him two zero yeah. in a hook. In yeah. a hook. And I won through sheer will. Yeah. The guy was a bull. He's got like what twenty inch forearms on the guy, but yeah. But he's I another. Won. He's another John Milne, you know. Um, <laughs> And kind of like me, we're, we're 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 happy to kind of get open in a hook as long as we have our hand. Unfortunately, someone like you that might be five percent weaker, not me, of course, compared to them, uh, that levered hook and not ever letting it up or, or having so much stamina will get you the win. It's, it's yeah. the ideal way to hook. It's, it's yeah. a perfect way to hook. It is, yeah. Because as he, I, I'm not using much. Like I'm using muscle, but a lot of hooking is it's like structural hooking, I guess you would say. Yeah. Well, the advantage you have with your frame, John Milne's 5'9", five, 5'8", five, five, you were 6'2". And also, when you're hooking John Milne or even Alex Levesque, I saw that match, every second that goes by, they're burning quicker, right? They're, they're, burning, they're burning energy a lot quicker yep. than you are. Yep. So, I mean, that's intelligent hooking. That's levered hooking. Yeah. yeah. So, what about you? You're, you have the last win on OLR, right? Left What's that? You have the last win on OLR. Are you the last guy to beat Olivier at his own weight category? Oh, maybe. Uh, that's a good question. The problem with him is we've seen him beat Allen. He's as... He yeah, called he... me out. That's why. He called me Did out. Did he really call you out? Yeah, that day after after I pulled LPJ, he comes yeah. up to me and he says, I'll pull you. Pull me in front of everybody. I'm like, dude, that's... Like, that's... To me, that's like that's disrespectful. He's, unprofessional. He's, see, he's, he's a... He's a... He's a... He's a... Um, he can pull great, but he's not a great puller. Yeah. Um, he, he has great matches, but has not had a great career. He's incons- inconsistent. And um, although he might have, we can argue he might have your arm power. Maybe he would never win that match because he could never get what he wants, and yeah. you take it away and just drain him. We know yeah. that. But uh, he's a he's a young ballsy kid. But he's yeah. not you, right? He does not. You love arm wrestling. He does not arm, love arm wrestling. He's a strong and, person, uh, I think. I think he's just a strong athlete, and he got hopped down. He hopped on the table. He had a little bit of a success. But I think he didn't. He didn't. He doesn't beat people from being a good arm wrestler. He beats people from being stronger than them. I think. Well, he's a good arm wrestler too. Opinion. He has good tools. Right? He, he's got everything. He's got good tools. The difference is he does not love arm wrestling. He loves the idea of being an arm wrestler. He does not love arm wrestling. So he trains for a month. Like yeah, and he's young too, right? Let, let's say he's, he's, yeah. he's nineteen, twenty. But he goes through six months of not thinking about arm wrestling, and then he puts two months in, and then he goes yeah. through, much like Pocket. I find the guys with the most amount of raw talent are the ones that kind of get bored and fade away. Uh, guys like you who don't have great talent but just fucking love the sport never go anywhere. And they, yeah. they kind of get better every little month. They get yeah. a little bit better and they have the better career. You never get bored. But and if when you do not lose. love the sport, I don't care how much talent you have, you will eventually yep. fade. And when they lose, it's like game over for them. Yeah, you they lose have- and it's like you lose. You're like, fuck it. I'll get back and I'll, I'll learn. I'll find a way and I'll beat you again. Watch. Uh, they get yep. beat and they're gone for eight months. Uh, it sucks. I'm dissuaded. My, ego su- uh, my ego's hurt. I'm gone. You, it's yep. like I have so much self-belief. I know I can beat you in time, no matter how how many beatings I fucking take. Yeah, and, and so that's, that's what happened. That's yeah. exactly what happened to me. All right, so we're at the Ottawa Open. Alex Pocket fresh, me fresh. Um, sorry, no, he Alex beat me left, and then me and Alex were pulling with the right arm. I just came off a win. I just beat Justin Major, and then Justin Major and Alex had a match. I think Alex beat him or something, and then it was me and Alex next. Uh, so Alex beat me left, and then Devin was talent. What fired me up was Devin was like. Don't worry about it, bro. He's a badass man. He's really badass. I was like, oh, yeah, watch this. Hopped on the yeah. table and fucking crushed him. Just because I don't like, like – to me, that's accepting defeat is when someone would so – he tries to like, make me feel better about myself. I didn't like that. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you'll watch this. <laughs> and I even told Devin, I said, you're next. Like, who's Who does that? You know what I'm saying? I really believed it, though. I really, truly believed that I was going to take Devin and bounce him off the table. And – it wasn't no, I mean, he beat me, he stopped it, he beat me, but it wasn't no freaking walk in the park. Like, we had like a, what was it, like a five or six minute match just from, because I'm so relentless, I do not start a match until I have something. And he's the exact same way. He was, he almost fell out because of it. But, uh, yeah, I tell, I, when I say something, I do it. And I tell you this is that I'm going to be the guy to beat Devin. I will, I'm going to beat Devin. I'm going to be the guy in Canada to beat him. He'll, Justin Major will never beat Devin because he, Devin practices with him too much. So they're, they're training partners. Justin has that 
Devin has the coach mentality over Justin. Well, so. Also, anytime Justin will ever pull Devin in a competition or with money or pressure on the line, he will look at Devin as a mentor and he'll get intimidated. You exactly. have the go fuck yourself, I don't give a fuck who you are attitude. Yeah. So you cannot, I'm not saying you'll beat him, but you cannot yeah. get intimidated. Justin will get intimidated. No, Justin can get intimidated right off the table. Super fast, right? Yeah. Devin's weakness is guys who are, who are strong, or sorry, fast, with a good amount of speed. So yeah. I don't think, if you put me and Devin on a WAF table, me at my strongest fired right up. I mean, he's going to slip his straps, but if I can get him down to that pin line, it's, okay. that's what's going to happen. It's yeah. going to be, he's going to get the straps and then it'll be game over for me. I'm just not strong enough to pull his uh, elite super heavyweight, but I'm going to get him close to that pin line. I'll tell you that just through speed and my tenacious being, but yeah, like it's, it's right now in Ontario, it's Devin Laird, the top 10 overall rankings. It's Devin Laird and then myself. And then I think it's, Ian Carnegie, and then Justin Major, and then Evan Burgoyne. That's fair. And I'm, more, and I'm like 210. Two, That's fair. Four, I'm a 210 guy, but like 215. But because I've never – I've beaten Justin every time we pulled. I've never lost to Ian. I've never lost to any of the guys like Larry. But, yeah, I, it's just been Devin. Devin is the only guy that I've never beaten that – Obviously, he beats me super easily when it's once it stops and all that. But he's the guy. He's the guy right now, obviously. But eventually, it's going to be me. I, mean, like, I can just promise that. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone's going to argue that. It's just a question of time. And because you love it, um, there's nothing stopping. You know, the, the, the future is bright. Uh, you don't have inconsistencies. You don't go away for three months. You're always there. So um, yeah. I, don't, I don't doubt you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a blink. Yeah. I think he believes it too. Like sometimes when we're at, like, I can just, I just, I can just see it where he, he knows. Like as soon as I get to practice, it's, hey, Brandon, all right, get over here. I'm pulling with Brandon right away. It's he wants to pull me and figure me out, right? But when I go to practice, it's not. I'm not there. To, a lot of guys go there to try and pit him. For me, I, I don't want to exploit myself that much because you never know if the time comes where it's me and him. Yeah, I don't want him to fully, fully know my capabilities. I'm not saying it's a match. It's, it's obviously I don't think it's close. Whenever it counts, but uh, I'm the guy that's going to do it for sure. Dude, you got a new wife. You got a new house. How was how was Christmas? How how was New Year's? Uh, oh, New Year's is just coming up. Actually, yeah. uh, oh, I just got back from New York yesterday. I was out in New York visiting some family, and yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Now I'm, New Year's is ready, and then ever since then, now it's just gonna be focusing on the house. Getting my arm wrestling gym uh, set up there in the basement. You know? Nice. I live in a really small town, like in the bush, so I really keep to myself. I like coming up in high school and stuff. Like I was a freaking wild boy. Right? I was partying and getting into no good. But I, I, I'm glad I got that in my system now because I want to be the best in the world. You can't do that stuff. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I want to uh, talk to Ryan about something. Ryan, the last thing I heard is your daughter challenged you by Valentine by February 14th to get down to 300. So where are you? How close are you? Uh, I have not done an update. So what you will see is uh, I think I will do one on Monday after I've had a full, you know, meaningful period of eating clean yeah. where we're at. So before we record or before we go live on Monday with Anders, by the way, for those people that were looking for Anders today, Anders is beyond in a week. Uh, you'll get an update on my uh, my weight loss by then as well. Nice. Oh, yeah, I don't. Have, I don't have a choice. I've got to be three hundred pounds by February the fourteenth, or else I'm in, nah, no choice. Yeah. yeah, in trouble with my kids. That's it. That's that's uh, yeah. no option there. Yeah. yeah. Well, gentlemen, I think we should probably wrap there. Yes, but Absolutely. before we do, let me read what I should have read at the start of the show. Yeah, let's see, let's see okay. what people have to talk shit about. Guys, I just want to talk about my our sponsors. Uh, number one. We've got Smirnoff Ice as usual. We've got Garage Door Guys and KC, Brian Kerner. And we have Arm Assassin Strength Shop, armassassin.com. So we have a contest running right now, and I guess we'll announce that on the following Monday, Gobby, uh, who wins that contest, and it's amongst our Patreon members. And right now we're still sitting at five. We have Brandon Irwin, Jorn Harold Haybu, Bernie Marcoccia, Zane William Nisley, and Jordan Yoakum. And guys, watch for the Patreon stuff to be restructured a little bit and changed up. And uh, Gobby V and you got to talk about putting some exclusive content out there. 
But more importantly than all that, we are all at around 900 subscribers right now. What do we do? What do we do to incentivize people aside from the Travis video that's unpublished? What are we going to do at 1,000 subscribers to get people motivated to hit that subscribe button? I don't know, man. We can we could try to think of something, but we're on a pretty good pace. Um, over the last month, we've 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 our pace of, of subscriptions have gone up quite a bit. So uh, we'll see, but it's looking promising. Yeah, one hundred and twenty-seven in the past month, and um, I checked the uh, monetization stats today. We're required to uh, have four thousand viewing hours over the past, I don't know, whatever months it is, but we're actually sitting at fourteen thousand. Wow, fourteen thousand viewing hours on our channel. So, nice. yeah. quick, uh, quick question: Who do you think is going to win the bottom eight this year? I don't even know who's in it. Come on, man! You got, you got. Who do we got? We got Wes, right? He's he's junk. I mean, he. I would take a million dollar super match with that guy with 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 fucking pneumonia with my right arm. You got Drellick, who's a bum. Who's like one four. Drellick's, Drellick's not in it. I don't know. I, I'll tell you who I think. Well, obviously Evans uh, is on, on paper be favorite, but watch out. He's, he's motivated. Watch out, my my pick, because you got charisma and he's a bad motherfucker on the table. Is Justin Bear? Um, he's he's pulling in it. I that's what I heard, and okay. that's the fact. He's my favorite. But how could you bet against Evan? I mean, who who would beat Evan? Who who do I? Who's there that that's I think? What we said last year. These are the names I have right now. Okay. So Larry Wheels. Um, nope. Larry Wheel. Yeah, Larry Get Wheels. Out of here. Yeah, is he confirmed? Uh, yes, I, I believe. Yeah, he's. Pr I'm pretty sure he's on the list. You got Alex Toprol. Um, he's not a right hand dominant guy, but he's not bad. He's 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 good. He's probably like a level low level three. Yeah, and non gobby system. Uh, you got. I think Juju's coming back. You got like that, that Jake Paul guy. You know, like that YouTube video dude. Get the Paul hell out of here! He's got Jake Paul. These are the names. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my got, God! Evans yeah. with it. Evan, you got Bowen. Bowen's back in. Oh well, maybe. Yeah, so. it's Evan and Bowen in the first match right now. Wow. So, oh. I mean, I, a lot of people are saying like th you should see all. Like, I have no hate against Bowen. I, I, he's a cool dude. We've chilled out. We've had dinners together. But a lot of these guys are like worshiping him. But the problem with that is, like, I can see so many issues in his style. In his whenever he pulls on a table, I can just see what everything he's doing wrong. I sent him a big message, and I don't know if he took it as an insult, but he maybe he just thought I'm a young idiot. But it's all because he wants to be like Todd Hutchings. People don't realize Todd Hutchings trains like that because he's a freak, and that's what his move is. So for for Ryan to, to start trying to set up like Todd and trying to pull like Todd at a freaking high-level, fast pace tournament where you need to be fast and a lot of hand game, like he's setting up so defensively thinking he's just going to catch these guys. and. That was a big problem I've seen when he went to Zelotti. He's trying to catch these guys in his defensive hook where, I, I don't know, sure, he got one win on Alan Guerra, but I mean, I beat the freaking number one overall guy in Mexico at the Pan Ams, and like, it was freaking pretty easily. So, I don't know. I don't know how good Bowen really is, but he, who was he beaten really to say? Man. Right, but but is, the question is, is Evan going to be sober or not? I mean, if he's sober I, motivated, I, you know what the thing is? lit up like last year. Yeah, so Evan's super motivated right now. Like he's yeah. training really hard. Like he he's repping us at, at practice. Good. I'm not I'm not coming in at him. I'm not I'm letting him take what he wants. Like he's getting into his spot where he wants to pull Bowen at. But I don't see Ryan coming close to a motivated, healthy Evan. He's even down to like two sixty right now or something like that. Like opposed to three hundred pounds, right? But uh Evan lost I think he just got sloppy and he was worried too much about the crowd. I don't think he was completely focused as he should have no. been. Overconfident, but, uh, too overconfident, yes, yeah. and he didn't. He wasn't focused. He should have. He should have relented on that one match and, and pinned himself. And he kept fighting from a weak position. Yeah. Hey, I mean, hats off. I mean, like, he's Ryan's good. He's being successful yeah. at what he's doing. I just don't think he's as good as people believe he is. Not that he will never get there, but he's good at making videos anyway. Yeah. Man, I so, can't wait to see it. That that sounds like a fun event now. All of a sudden, with all these YouTube people. Who does? Yeah. yeah. All, all right, right, gentlemen. Yeah. Man. All right, guys. Thank Brandon, you guys. thanks for coming on, man. Oh, thanks a lot. We'll yeah. do it again. You're fucking right. Cheers. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. Stay strong.